Welcome back to another video. My name is Henrik and today we're going to be looking at the Suzuki Jimny, the mini G-Class of its segment. And look at this. Oh, oh. And that means we're going to take this thing off-roading because that is what it's meant for. So let's get right to it. So who is this car made for? Well, it's made for people who want to live in the forest. No, it's made for people who want to basically have a lot of things to do in the forest, who live in the backcountry, who want to drive this thing a little bit more off-roady on the occasion and while still having a fairly practical car for the city as well. But this car is basically meant for those people because the off-road capabilities in this car are very surprising for the price that you're paying here for almost 27,000 euros. This thing has quite the good amount of capabilities. It does have a rigid axle um, or rigid um, axle on the front and the back, meaning if you drive over a little bit more bumpy roads, if one wheel of the axis is going to be um, in the air, the other one's going to have the full power and just spin a little bit to get you out of that situation and just so you're not floating in the air and spinning that one wheel not getting it to um, your destination. But this is going to allow you to get very capable on here. Ground clearance of 20.5 20.5 20 centimeters, again fairly high. You have an approach angle of 36 degrees, you have a departure angle of 48 degrees and a breakover angle of 27 degrees, meaning also fairly comfortable when you're trying to approach something, trying to get on steeper hills and it has a fairly um, big approach angle. That's gonna allow you to be fairly comfortable in this car. On top of that, you also get a couple of different modes in here. For instance, you have the 2H, which is just going to be rear-wheel drive. Your 4H for your normal use if you want to use a little bit more off-road capabilities or if you're just looking for a little bit more traction and want to spin all those wheels. And 4L. 4L is going to basically allow you to have more power in lower gears. Um, so it's, you're just gonna, it's basically like a sport mode, but you don't really want to use it as a sport mode. It's just meaning that if you're in the first gear, you're going to have your full power fairly quickly. Well, not full power, but very good amount of power, which is good for if you're trying to go uphill um, and you're parked on the hill and then you're trying to get off the hill and you need quite a good amount of torque to get away from it and good amount of RPMs. That's going to really help you with that, which is very, very nice. So let's test out the 4L. We're going to drive up that hill because it is fairly steep and then we're also going to put that in there we're gonna park up there and we're gonna put it into 4L and then try to take off from it because you can see it is fairly steep so let's now put it press down put it into 4L that's gonna turn off the well the traction control and also the collision warning basically the video of today's sponsor is Car Vertical, your perfect place to check if you're getting ripped off or you just want to check the history of your car. What Car Vertical does is it gives you a full history of the car after you input it the VIN number of the car, which you can most of the times find on your windshield. Let's take a look at this Suzuki Jimny. The Suzuki Jimny has nothing with the odd meter, it has nothing with the financial or legal status, but it does have a problem with its damage. And it, you can see it checked over 900 data sources in 35 different countries. So if the car even went to Thailand, it's probably still going to find that car. And you can see there's pictures of the car and there's not been a reported theft. There's nothing wrong with the odd meter, so you see every single detail of it. And you can also see that there's damage. So this vehicle has been damaged two times and it also shows you where and how much the repair cost is, for instance, 500 to 1,500 euros. So if you want to check the history of your car and basically more, Make sure to use Car Vertical and make sure to use our code Nonstop Driving and also use the link or use the link in the description to get 10% discount on your next order. <laughs> okay, thank you. Look at that, easily done. And you can hear, you're gonna have to shift up and you can just hear that engine working a little bit harder now. If you listen to it, it sounds a lot different, but you're gonna be, look at this. It has the power straight away, which is really, really nice. You'd love to see it. But yeah, that was easily, well, that was the steepest place that we had. And that was really well and easily done. So while we're here on the steepest section that we have, let's also test our hill descent um, mode. So if you press that, it should, or we gotta hold it. And there you go, you see that light on there. Let's see what it does. I haven't tried it, so I'm gonna be interesting to what it does. 
So if we drive a little bit faster, yeah, you can you can definitely tell it's gonna break for you, which is nice. You can see traction control is also completely spinning here, which is interesting. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that's just gonna help you with that if we can turn it off again. There you go. You can definitely hear it as well. It breaks for you, which yeah, is okay. Um, doesn't, well, just breaks. That's what it does. <laughs> so it breaks for you. But yeah, the capabilities in here as well, you don't have any differential locks, so you can't change anything in that department. But otherwise, this car, look at that. Like, <laughs> you, obviously we have the perfect condition right now for off-road, so we have basically the best amount of grip because there's no mud on here. We're gonna have a little bit of mud in a second. But still, if you get like off-road tires on here and you want to take this thing off-roading, this is going to be like a really, really fun thing. And because it's so small, with a turning circle of 9.8 meters, you're going to be able to even turn on the smallest section of this, of this track, which just makes it really, really capable. And the other thing that you get on this, you can put the RPMs really, really low. You can see I'm below 9,000, 9,000, 1,000 right now. So I'm around 800 right now. And it does have a little bit of a feeling like it's about to stall, but still, you can even get this down to 500 and it's not stalling. So you can have really low RPMs and I'm completely off the clutch, so I'm not touching the clutch at all and it's not stalling. So really, really low RPMs, which is gonna allow you to be so functional with this car. And it's not even a diesel, it's a petrol engine and that is surprisingly well made. This steering input is very, look, you can see I'm moving this thing very, very heavy and it is very indirect. So you're gonna have to move this quite a lot to actually get to what you're wanting to get, which is good for off-roading, but in all, um, if you're using it on a daily driving basis, this is not gonna be very nice because it just requires a lot of input. So the thing that is fairly special about this car in Germany is that the emission rate of this car is fairly bad. So that is why they made it to a utility vehicle because then the emission norm is a little bit different. And that is due to the fact that we have an engine in here which is a 1.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder engine which produces 102 horsepower with 130 newton meters. And this thing is fairly insufficient with a combined WLTP of 7.7 .7 liters with a VMAX of 145 kilometers an hour and also only five gears. So you're gonna be looking at 3,500 RPMs when you're over 100 kilometers an hour. So the trunk of this car is actually fairly enormous considering the size of the car. You get 863 liters of storage space in here, 112 20 watt charging port. You get a light up top, which is nice. And you also get this cage in here. So I feel like a dog in the back, but you can also adjust it to have more space in the front. So you can adjust it on the top, but you're gonna have to screw it and unscrew it. But in general, quite a good amount of stuff in here. You even got your towing hook in here and just in general, a fairly practical boot considering the size of this car. So the door in here does also have like a little spring. You can see if I don't close it fully, it's going to go back automatically. That makes it a little bit harder to close, but still a very nice um, thing to have and a very big door as well. You get a spare tire on the back. You can also change the design of this a little bit. Down here, we also have a towing hitch where you can plug it in. So it's plug and play basically um, of up to 1,300 kilograms. And you can also put on there 75 kilograms of um, basically 75 kilograms of whatever you want to put on there. We do have this like railing on the top, which is for rain. So it is going to drip down in the front, but it's going to cover the rain from all up on the top, which is nice because if you're opening the door, it's not going to fully go down into your, um, well, into your interior, but it's going to go around the top, which is pretty cool. We do also have this plastic all around, which makes it very nice for off-roading. You can see we do have some, let's call them off-road tires. They look very off-roady. They're not completely off-road tires. You can get more off-road tires on here, but these are a mix of highway and off-roady tires. And you can see you're not going to hit any curb on this thing, which is very, very nice. In general, the car is going to be a three meters and 64 long. It's going to be um, one meter and 64 wide and also a meter and 70 tall. So a very compact car and I really, the design of this car just looks so amazing and 
really, really love the design of this thing. You can see on the front, we got a nice old big grill in here with the Suzuki logo on here. Our headlights, which are not going to be LED, so these are halogen and also fog lights down here with another little intake down there. And this is all going to be plastic again for some off-road capabilities to not get any scratches in there. And all of this is going to set you back just under 27,000 euros at its starting price. So let's talk about the car while we're driving normally. The one thing that I did already talk about is the gearing ratio on here. As you can see, we're currently at 60 kilometers an hour. We're at on the fifth gear, so the highest one, and we're almost at 2,000 RPMs. That means if you're driving on the Autobahn for a longer time, the consumption is gonna be fairly high. If you're cruising at 100 kilometers an hour, you're gonna be at 3,500 RPMs, and that's gonna get the consumption up to around 10 liters. Over the past 518 kilometers, we have been having a consumption of eight liters, WLTP climb 7.7, .7. So fairly close to um, what we're actually currently reaching, which is not that bad at all. Considering that it is a naturally aspirated engine and it doesn't have any, well, it just, it's a fairly high consumption for the car, but still, in my opinion, it's an okay consumption. The one that's in the interior that is obviously what it's supposed to be is fairly robust. So everything where you touch here, it's hard plastic or just like some other stuff. You don't have any, any infotainment display, but you just want the bare minimums in here. But you also have heated seats in here, which is pretty cool. And you do have a climate control and also windows. Um, well, you have windows on the sides, wow. Which do actually provide a very good surrounding view, which makes it very good for the city. And it's fairly small with that 9.8 turning circle. It is gonna be fairly maneuverable around the city. You do also have a couple of assistant features on here. Well, not really that much, but you do have um, a limiter and you do also have lane keeping, or not lane keeping assist, but lane assist, which only works in the sense that it warns you and vibrates your steering wheel and adjusts a little bit if you're going off the, um, if you're going off the center of the road. Um, but that's the only thing it does. And the safety features, have an NCAP norm of 50% and in general the car only has 3.5 stars but you don't expect much more from it to be fair so it's not going to be the safest car but compared to Dutch Your Spring you're still going to be a little bit safer off I'm just going to mention that um, but in general the ride quality here is actually fairly good it's fairly well it just has that SUV feeling where you're going from side to side and I like it so what is my final verdict on the Suzuki Jimny well especially if you look at it right here it just looks like a mini G-Class, and that's what I really like about this car. The design-wise, I love it. Capability-wise, also, there's nothing you can compare it in the same market. The only thing that comes close to it is basically a Dacia Duster, but that is not completely in the same niche as this car. So there's really nothing um, competitor-wise that I know of. If you know of any of them, let me know in the comments. But generally, a very practical, well, not very practical, but a fairly practical car, and a very nice car, in my opinion. So hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. Make sure to like, subscribe. We'll see you next time, and bye-bye.